Hello, I'm Trey and welcome to one of my colouring tutorials. Uh, I've been working on a design in various other tutorials, uh, whereas there's a light, a lamp on a table. And um, I've done a couple of other tutorials with this design from Favo Reads. And I'm going to be doing another one uh, in this tutorial and another item on that table because I want you to uh, show light source coming from the lamp on the table now it affects what's underneath it. Now in the other tutorials there was a lamp that was done and also a, a kitten uh, but in this one I'm going to be doing an apple that's on the table that will be affected by the lamp that's shining down on it. Uh, I'll be continuing to use our teaser pencils in this tutorial as I, uh, I did do with the other two um, tutorials using this design and hopefully um, anybody that's watching this will get some hints and tips from it. Now just to remind uh, people of the design I'm working on, this is the design and in the other tutorials I did the lamp and this kitten and working out the, especially the kitten, how the light affects it as it's coming from above from the lit lamp. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be working in this apple and um, take into account the light that will glance over one side of the apple. I've just zoomed in a little bit to make it a bit easier for people to see any detail. And um, there is a little bit of um, line art as with the kitten so I'll be using some of that as well for highlights and darker sections. Now the first part I'm going to do is the apple stem and leaf and I'm going to be using um, three colours for the, that part. I'm going to be using um, a light green and it's 609 for the Arteza uh, a dark green, 618, for the Arteza pencils, and for very dark, I'm going to be using a dark brown, 309. Now, because you can't see the lamp now in the uh, picture in the camera, but the lamp is going to be eating this part of the apple, I feel, because of where it is and now the, the light's shining. Um, so I'm going to be putting in the lightest part first, just on this section and the leaf. So I feel that the top half of that stem would be lighter and the light will be catching this part of the leaf. So I'm going to use the lighter green on the top part of that curled up leaf and a little bit on that section there because it would possibly catch that as well. Um, now I'm going to use my dark green. So going towards the uh, part of the apple, inside the apple it's connected to, that will be darker. And the leaf, as it moves away from the light, will be darker. So I'll put in a darker section there. I'm using light pressure all the time, as I generally do. I've decided I want to extend the lighter green on the inside of the leaf, just to overlap a little bit onto the darker green. And I'm just going to repeat what I've just done a couple more times. Now I'm going to use the dark brown and darken in the section of the leaf that is the furthest away from the light as in it's bending away. I'm going to darken that in on the leaf. 
and just at the lowest part of the stem. I'll go over that with the dark green. And then I'll overlap again and into the uh, light sections. Now, I won't be putting all the layers down that I feel will be needed for this apple on camera. This is because it's a lot of repetitiveness and you be watching a lot of stuff you don't need to. So that leaf there, I've now done the first couple of layers and I will uh, do the rest off camera, but I will just be repeating what I've just done. Now we're gonna look at the apple. Now for this apple, I'm going to be using uh, a pale orange, almost peachy looking, 110 and I'll be using a light red 205 a dark red 208 and the dark brown again 309 now I've mentioned the numbers for the Arteza but I've also mentioned the colours I'm using because it doesn't matter what brand of pencil you're using just use similar colours. So now I'm going to try and work out where my light sections are. And I feel that this part of the apple will catch the light more until we start to get, you know, on the top of this section here, until we get to about here. Because I feel at this point it'll be moving away from the light and at this end it'll be darkest. So I'm just going to put in very lightly the lightest sections that I feel the light will be catching from the lamp. Now this is probably quite difficult to see on camera because because this colour is quite light but when I do another layer it will show up a bit better. So I put in a light coating of, of the very pale orange and as I've moved further down I'm going to go, go on to the light red because as it moves away from the light at the bottom it's going to go more shadowy. So I feel that it will go shadowy as it goes away from the light, as the apple curves away. And at this section, at the top, it will still catch some light, but not quite as much. So I'm going to put uh, the light red in there. And I'll be following the curves of the apple around as I, as I colour in this light section, lighter section of red because I feel that that will still be in the light partially but not as light as the peachy orange I put down. So I'm now going to put in this light red following the apple as it moves away from the light and that's the curve of the apple which will be moving away from the light. Just in a light pressure, because I'll be adjusting this as I go along.
Now I've put down the light red and want to overlap it slightly with the pale orange I use for the highlight just to soften up those lines and make more of a gradient effect. Now I want to look at putting in darker sections. I'm using the dark red now. Now inside this section of the apple will be darker and I'm going to darken in that part because it will cause a shadow from the top as it bends away from the light and a little bit on this side because there will be a shadow from the stem. Uh, now I'm going to move over to this edge and from this edge it will be darker because it's, it's curved away from the light. And I'm always using light pressure throughout this. So it might look, it will look patchy, but that's because it, it will need more layers. That's fine, you just slowly uh, build it up. I'm going to use the light red just to overlap slightly into the darker red I've just put down just to soften up that transition and make, give it a more of a gradient effect. Now I'm going to use the dark brown. I'm going to go in to sections where I feel would be darker. Just slightly, just to darken in that red I've just put down. Now behind this leaf and along this line, this edge of the apple, I think would be darker. Now it's just a light pressure and that is because it's curved away from the light. So the light's coming here from the lamp and it needs there. As it moves away, it curves away from the light, it gets slightly darker and at this part of the apple, it's away from the lamp light. So I'm going to put that in darker. I hope that makes sense. Now, this, I'm going to be using some of this liner to um, also do a little bit of depth for the apple. Um, so I'm going to leave that bit there slightly lighter and go around it. That's just to give it some more depth, really. And this bottom part of the apple, I think would also be darker because it's curved away and down. And there's also some line art here and I want to do something similar in here as well. Just start it in slightly to give it a little bit of depth and go around the edge that section now I'm going to go back to the other pieces of uh, lines in the design and darken in around some of this line art I'm using the light red to darken in in the peach sections or light orange
and in between those lines beside what I've just put down I'm just going to lighten that in again so I'll be going over some of the light red to lighten it up slightly Now using my darkest red, I'm going to be creating a little bit of depth again using the line art to highlight certain sections. So that's the first layers down for my apple. I'm going to now um, repeat what I've just done. So I'm going to go back to my lightest colour, which is a pale orange, peachy colour, I think it is a bit as well, and go over those highlighted sections. Overlapping slightly into the light red I'm now going to repeat the light red sections that I put down first And then I'm going to use a dark red and repeat those sections. And now I'm going to go in and uh, use my dark brown and repeat those sections that I did originally on the first layers. Now that's uh, the first couple of layers really of each colour that needs to go down on the apple. Now I will be repeating that quite a few times to build up the colour on this apple. So I'm going to be doing that off camera because uh, obviously you don't feel, I don't feel people need to sit and watch all of that. So I will be doing quite a lot of more layers and then I'll come back to this. Now I'll put down about four layers of each of those colours and now I'm going to try a little bit of a blend. I tried a, a soft blend with just a dry cotton bud. It didn't um, kind of like blend very well but this is quite textured paper. So I put a little bit of zest on the end of a cotton bud and I'm going to just gently do some strokes I'm trying to keep my uh, 
darker sections and highlights. Now I'm going to um, do the same again with the lighter section with a different cotton bud, a little bit of uh, zest on because I don't want to bleed the red into the pale peach too much. So that's worked reasonably well. I just wanted to see if I need to do more layers and I think I'll put another layer down and see how it looks. Right, I'm going to put in the lightest sections first because where I put, try to highlight this, uh, these sections where there's line art, I've been putting the lighter section in just to lighten it enough so it's quite a bit different from what's a, you know the darker section beside it if that makes sense <laughs> right so I'm going to do the uh, light red and just gently add another layer I'm using the dark red and going over those sections. I'll first put the dark red down. I'm going to use the brown again, dark brown, just to go into the darker sections and add a bit more darkness to the line art that I, where I put it down in the first two layers. And I'm going to do another light blend using the zest, which is in this. I have a, the little container with the sponge in, and I put the fluid in here. Just find it easier to to use. Just put a little bit on my cotton board. Just gently smooth out. The layers I've just put down. Trying not to push the dark too much into the lighter sections. Now I'm going to go over again with my lightest pencil, just put a little bit more pigment down. The zest works better when there's more pigment and I always find it harder to use with lighter colours. I'm 
and do a little blend of that section. The green leaf, uh, I put down those colours again I would use, the brown, the dark green and the light green and I just used a blender pencil to blend that out. It's a smaller area so it works better with a blend blender pencil. Right, so that apple is now finished. And if I zoom out, there we go. If I zoom out there and the lamp is coming down and catching this part of the apple and gradually it gets darker until it gets to the darkest section on this side of the apple. And I think that's worked quite nicely. Um, I'm pleased how that's come out. So yes, that's the uh, a demonstration of how you can do an apple on a table that's affected by a, a light above it and to the side actually, it's kind of like top left. So that's quite a good light source that to work with. So that's the end of this tutorial. And I do hope anybody that's watched this has found this useful, got some ideas, hints and tips. And um, please do come and chat with me on my Facebook page. There's a link in the description for that. Or leave any comments. I'd love to read them and I'll respond to them as soon as I can. So I'll say bye for now and I'll see you again with another tutorial in the near future.